Championship between Stephen Hendry and Mark Williams has got underway at the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield. Hendry is bidding for a record seventh title in this best of 35 frame match and he raced to an early 4-0 advantage nice thanks in part to a break of 98 in the second nice frame. Century. The latest score we have is that Hendry leads by five frames to two. Finally, the Scot Dean Robertson has won the Italian Golf Open in Turin with a 17 under par 271. It's his first victory on the European Tour. Maura. Thank you. That's it from us. The late news tonight is at 10.35. Good evening. <laughs>Good evening. Well, it's hard to believe that we've had a practically fine bank holiday weekend, but it is set to last for Bank Holiday Monday as well. At the moment, we've got cloud across northern England, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And down to the south, there's a little bit of shower cloud developing here. We could just see a shower during this evening. By dawn, though, it will be dry everywhere, and I think the lowest temperatures will be up in the glens of Scotland, perhaps getting down to around 2. But elsewhere, I think temperatures holding up around 6 to 7. Well, for Monday morning, I think we will see a little bit of fog once again along the coast in the south for Devon Cornwall, some cloud in the eastern side of England and in the west of Scotland, but it will be a dry start to the day. I think one or two showers could develop in western Scotland, perhaps in inland areas as well of England and Wales, but many of you having a dry day again. Quite a warm day inland, temperature around 20 to 21, but when we add in the southeasterly or easterly breeze on the eastern side, it will be cooler there, and so too along the south coast with a sea breeze setting up. Now watch out, the sun is quite strong on Bank Holiday Monday. Bye-bye for now. In the fight against car crime. It's not a game of cat and mice, really. We're the mice and the cats and the other cats. You need to be prepared. We've got the eyes of it, haven't we? Know your enemy. But every time they was trying to catch us, we're always like one step ahead. And strike to win. I decided enough was enough. We were going to hit it, hit it hard, and we will concentrate our resources in defeating the problem. Cracking down on criminals. Car War starts tomorrow at 8.30 on BBC One. It comes down to a battle of wills. Tuesday night on 999, battling against the elements. I don't think I'd realised how serious it was. Against all odds. If I hadn't have done what I did on that day, I wouldn't have been here now. Against the clock. He wasn't making any breathing efforts for himself. Facing up to real dangers. We can't rehearse on something like this. So that's no. just trying to think what I, what I presume is going to happen. 999, Tuesday night at 5 past 10 on BBC One. Pam Rhodes presents a special edition of Songs of Praise, a prom praise from the Rod Albert Hall. That's in five minutes here on BBC One. First, a roundup of the local news now on BBC One Northern Ireland with Donna Trainer. <laughs> Good evening. The Ulster Democratic Party has blamed Republicans for an attack on the Shankill UFF leader Johnny Adair. Adair says he was shot while attending a concert in the Botanic Gardens in Belfast on Friday night. He's now returned to the Mays prison after weekend parole. Yvette Shapiro reports. Several thousand people attended the Rock Festival in Belfast's Botanic Gardens on Friday night. Amongst them, the Shankill UFF leader, Johnny Adair, and his wife, Gina. Adair, who was on weekend parole from prison, claims he was shot as he watched UB40 performing on stage. I didn't see the gun man, but I heard the bang and felt the pain and seen the flash. I therefore knew that I had been shot. Immediately after, people started shouting, it's Johnny Adair, it's Johnny Adair, and they assaulted me. And they assaulted my wife at the same time. I thought I was just going to lose it. Just wanted to get him out of there as quickly as I could. Adair says he was chased through the park by up to a dozen men and escaped through this entrance gate. He then ran a few yards down the road to the top of Botanic Avenue, where he flagged down a taxi, which took him to the Shankill. Later, he says, he went to hospital, where he was treated for a gunshot wound to the head. Adair, who's serving a 16-year sentence for directing terrorism, believes he was attacked by Republicans. His claim is backed by the political party linked to the UFF. I have no doubt in my mind that this was Republicans. The Ulster Democratic Party, I'm sure, will be asking as soon as possible for an inquiry and it would be interesting to hear what the Republicans have to say. As preparations were made for tonight's concert in the park, the RUC appealed for information about the attack. Yvette Shapiro, Newsline, Botanic Gardens.
A man's been treated in hospital after a sectarian attack in South Belfast in the early hours of this morning. He was walking along the Donegal Road when two, with two women when he was set upon by a gang in the village area. He was dragged into an entry off Rockview Street but managed to escape. He was later treated for cuts to his arms, back and chest. Sinn Féin say any attempt to create a Stormont executive with limited powers wouldn't help solve the current deadlock in the talks. A report in today's Observer newspaper suggests that the two Prime Ministers are to propose a six-month transitional period for a shadow executive, which would get full powers if there was decommissioning. But speaking at a rally in West Belfast, Assemblymember Jerry Kelly said such a proposal was sure to fail. My difficulty with it is that it sounds a wee bit like the son of Hillsborough or the, you know, Hillsborough genetically modified and uh, Hillsborough did not work and this is not going to work. The process has basically been parked for a year. How long have we, have we to go on on the basis of David Trimble threatening to walk away from this process, being afraid to set up the institutions that were agreed in the Good Friday Agreement of last year? A man in his 20s has died in a car crash on the Moy Road in Armagh. His name hasn't been released yet. It's the second road death this weekend. Gaelic football now and Ulster will not be represented in this year's National League final. Dublin have beaten Armagh by a goal and 14 to 12 points in today's semi-final replay at Croke Park. Dublin now meet Cork in the final next Sunday. And Monaghan were beaten in the under-21 semi-final by West Meath. Disappointment also for Eddie Irvine this afternoon as he failed to finish in the San Marino Grand Prix. Denise Watson reports. Irvine had started so well, maintaining his grid position of fourth for 17 laps and moving to third when leader Mika Hakkinen lost control of his McLaren and slammed into a wall. But disappointment was around the corner, an engine problem forcing the Ulster man to retire three quarters of the way through the race. A blow for Irvine. Had he finished third, he'd have jointly led the Drivers' Championship with teammate Michael Schumacher, the eventual winner at Imola today. Denise Watson, Newsline. And the local weather remaining dry tonight with broken cloud, mainly dry tomorrow with bright or sunny intervals. That's the local news so far. Good evening. Tonight, try hard with some makeup. It's a case of confused identities. And I thought when I grew up I'd be an engine driver. In our explosive comedy double. Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Who are you? Never mind who I am. Last of the summer wine and good night, sweetheart. Tonight from eight on BBC One. In Let's Talk on Tuesday the 11th of May, uh, the next is the next programme. It's on the eve of the historic first sitting of the Scottish Parliament and David Dunseith will be questioning senior politicians about the big issues of the day, local and international. If you'd like to be in the audience and ask a question of your own, then please write to Let's Talk, Broadcasting House, or more Avenue, Belfast BT2 8HQ. Or you can phone Belfast, 338 658. A special Songs of Praise, now on BBC One, with Pam Rhodes. Hello from the Royal Albert Hall and welcome to Prom Praise, a sellout night in the company of the All Souls Orchestra with all the atmosphere of the last night of the proms and the spirit of worship you know you'll find in Songs of Praise. 